Ash-arism or Ash'ari theology, Arabic, Alashrit al-Ariya or Alashart al-Ira, is the foremost theological school of Sunni Islam which established an orthodox dogmatic guideline based on clerical authority, founded by the Arab theologian Abu al-Hasan al-Ash'ari d. 936, a 324. The disciples of the school are known as Ash'arites, and the school is also referred to as the Ash'arite school, which became the dominant strand within Sunni Islam. It is considered one of the orthodox schools of theology in Sunni Islam, alongside the Maturidi school of theology. Amongst the most famous Ash'arites are Al-Bayhaqi, Al-Nawawi, Al-Ghazali, Is al-Din ibn Abd al-Salam, Al-Suyuti, Ibn Asakir, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, Al-Kurchubai and Al-Subki. Topic: History Topic. Founder Abu al-Hasan al-Ash'ari was noted for his teachings on atomism, among the earliest Islamic philosophies, and for al-Ash'ari this was the basis for propagating the view that God created every moment in time and every particle of matter. He nonetheless believed in free will, elaborating the thoughts of Durar ibn Amr and Abu Hanifa into a dual agent, or Acquisition. Ektisab account of free will, while al Ash'ari opposed the views of the Mutazili school for its over emphasis on reason, he was also opposed to the view which rejected all debate, held by certain schools such as the Zahiri, literalist, Mujasimida, anthropotheist, and Muhadithan, traditionalist. Schools for their over emphasis on taklid imitation in his Istisan al Ko. A section of the people, i.e., the Zahirite and others, made capital out of their own ignorance. Discussions and rational thinking about matters of faith became a heavy burden for them, and, therefore, they became inclined to blind faith and blind following. Taklid. They condemned those who tried to rationalize the principles of religion as innovators. They considered discussion about motion, rest, body, accident, color, space, atom, the leaping of atoms, and attributes of God, to be an innovation and a sin. They said that had such discussions been the right thing, the Prophet and his companions would have definitely done so. They further pointed out that the Prophet, before his death, discussed and fully explained all those matters which were necessary from the religious point of view, leaving none of them to be discussed by his followers, and since he did not discuss the problems mentioned above, it was evident that to discuss them must be regarded as an innovation. Topic. Development Ash'arism became the main school of early Islamic philosophy whereby it was originally based on the foundations laid down by Abu al-Hasan al-Ash'ari who founded the school in the 10th century based on the methodology taught to him by his teacher Abdullah ibn Sa'id ibn Qalab. However, the school underwent many changes throughout history resulting in the term Ash'ari, in modern usage, being extremely broad, e.g. differences between Ibn Farak d. A406 and Al-Bayhaqi d. A384, for example, the Ash'arite view was that comprehension of the unique nature and characteristics of God were beyond human capability. The solution proposed by Abu al-Hasan al-Ash'ari to solve the problems of Tashbi and Tatil concedes that the divine being possesses in a real sense the attributes and names mentioned in the Quran. Insofar as these names and attributes have a positive reality, they are distinct from the essence, but nevertheless they do not have either existence or reality apart from it. The inspiration of al-Ash'ari in this matter was on the one hand to distinguish essence and attribute as concepts, and on the other hand to see that the duality between essence and attribute should be situated not on the quantitative but on the qualitative level—something which Mutazili thinking had failed to grasp. Topic. Beliefs. The Ash'arite view holds that 
God is all-powerful, therefore all good and evil is what God commands or forbids. What God does or commands, as revealed in the Quran and Ahadith, is by definition just. What he prohibits is by definition unjust. Right and wrong are not objective realities. Insisting, as the opposing Mutazila did, that because God is just he cannot do, command something unjust such as condemn someone to hell over something beyond their control is an error because this limits his power. Some divine acts, commands might seem unfair, unjust to human beings, but the unique nature and attributes of God cannot be understood fully by human reasoning and the senses. Reason is God-given and must be employed judge over source of knowledge. Intellectual inquiry is decreed by the Quran and by Muhammad, thus interpretations of the Quran, Tafsir, and the Hadith should keep developing with the aid of older interpretations. Only God knows the heart and knows who belongs to the faithful and who not. God may forgive the sins of those in hell. Support of Kalam Although humans possess free will, or, more accurately, freedom of intention, they have no power to create anything, thus simply decide between God's given possibilities. This doctrine is now known in Western philosophy as occasionalism. According to the doctrine of Kasb acquisition, any and all human acts, even the raising of a finger, are created by God, but the human being who performs the act is responsible for it, because they have acquired the act. The Quran is the uncreated word of God in essence, however it is created then it takes on a form in letters or sound. Knowledge of God comes from studying the holy names and attributes in addition to studying the Quran and the Hadith of Muhammad. Muslim must believe in the five pillars of Islam. In all the prophets of Islam from Adam to Muhammad. And in angels. Topic. Criticism Ibn Taymiyyah attacked Ashari thought as, in the words of one historian, Jonathan A. C. Brown, a Greek solution to Greek problems that should never have concerned Muslims. Both Shah Wali Allah and Ibn Taymiyyah rejected the lack of literalism in Ashari speculative theology and advocated straightforward acceptance of God's description of himself. On the other hand, German Orientalist Eduard Sackau blamed the theology of Ash'ari and its biggest defender, Al-Ghazali, specifically for the decline of Islamic science starting in the 10th century, and stated that the two clerics were the only obstacle to the Muslim world becoming a nation of Galileos, Keplers and Newtons. Others, however, argue that the Asharites not only accepted scientific methods but even promoted them. Ziauddin Sardar points out that some of the greatest Muslim scientists, such as Ibn al-Haytham and Abu Rayhan al-Biruni, who were pioneers of the scientific method, were themselves followers of the Ash'ari school of Islamic theology. Like other Asharites who believed that faith or taqlid should apply only to Islam and not to any ancient Hellenistic authorities, Ibn al-Haytham's view that taqlid should apply only to prophets of Islam and not to any other authorities formed the basis for much of his scientific skepticism and criticism against Ptolemy and other ancient authorities in his doubts concerning Ptolemy and Book of Optics. Some authors have questioned the spiritual value of discussion methods employed by the Ash'arites and other dialectical theologians. Fakir al-Din al-Razi, himself a leading figure of the Ash'ari school, said at the end of his life, I employed all the methods which philosophy and dialectic had provided, but in the end I realized that these methods neither could bring solace to the weary heart nor quench the thirst of the thirsty. The best method and the nearest one to reality was the method provided by the Quran. Topic. See also List of prominent Asherists 
2016 International Conference on Sunni Islam in Grozny Islamic Schools and Branches Kalam Maturidi Sufism Mutazila Bai La Kaifa equals equals notes <laughs>